AM 1260 KLYC. We're here with Ken Wright, Ken Wright Cellars, and we are looking at precision agriculture and what is happening in the vineyards here at Ken Wright Cellars. Wally is a pruning robot, and we're going to see a demonstration today. So as we were looking at this just a moment ago, Ken, you were telling me that you don't need as much help in pruning with this robot, but you do are excited about the possibilities of harvesting. I am. The uh, The issues we're facing today for with labor shortages are, are primarily with harvest, where the need is so great when you need so many people in the field at one time. Um, with pruning, as, as great as this looks, and I hope it... Uh, that the machine performs today for uh, for us, but uh, pruning we do manage to do uh, fairly easily given the current labor force because it takes place over months. Um, but we are facing issues with labor shortage big time uh, right now at harvest already you have for the last three years, and it's pro- getting progressively worse. We talked to a representative who's helped develop Wally, who is, we're going to see a pruning demonstration today. He tells me that they do have um, flexible arms that will help in the harvesting. Yes. Now let's talk about the work shortage as far as harvesting. What What is the issue there? You say you're having a hard time getting people. Is it getting as many people as you need right now when the time is critical or just numbers of people just at all? It's just getting that many people in the field at one time. You know, it's one thing to have a group of, say, a dozen folks who work throughout the year or throughout the, the winter doing pruning and uh, can do it a, at a fairly casual pace. Harvest is not casual. Harvest is intense. Harvest is right now. It's immediate. And we need everybody on board now. And so that can be 80 people, 100 people at w- any one point in time. And uh, and, it, and those decisions get made. Uh, f- they can be made with very, very short, um, you know, time windows. So with, we may make a decision that in two days we needed to have uh, two fields picked. And that means 80 people. And we have two days to find those folks. And then what's been happening in the last three years is that contractors have been having difficulty finding that many people. Why is that? It's because the labor forces, which are obviously largely um, Mexican and seasonal, um, is, is, is diminishing. Um, the workforce is aging. Uh, it's getting, becoming an older population. Young people, um, their, their sons and daughters are not coming into the workforce. They don't want to work in the field. It's hard work really hard work and there are other ways and there are you know many of these younger folks the sons and daughters have opportunities through education um, here in this country to do to do far more than field work and they're taking advantage of that and good on them let's talk about uh, use of robotics you were asked a question just a moment ago do you ever think robots will totally replace humans you say no no I mean uh, robots um, can only do what humans design them to do and uh, you know you you I can't imagine any time that you would have robots loose in a field, you know, without some some supervision, and uh, and obviously uh, some some uh, some uh, you know influence from human beings as to how the work is performed. Obviously, so you were also talking a moment ago about the use of drones. Uh, as far as the wine industry, the grape growing industry. Drones important and why? Uh, drones can be effective. Currently, drones can be very effective in doing infrared imag- imagery, uh, which can help us to detect areas in a vineyard that may be stressed due to n- poor nutrition or stressed due to lack of water. Um, and that's important for us to know going through a season areas that are challenged inside your site. It's important to be able to address those challenges to give the those vines. Um, any any help, any aid, either, either through water or nutrition, that helps them perform at the highest level. What are the challenges right now in the winemaking industry? You've been in this industry for how long? Uh, since '76. And here in the Willamette Valley since, since '86. What are the what are, you, what are your biggest challenges now? Oh, well, the you know the challenges in terms of um, um, it depends on which which side on the production side. Again, labor right. labor is our biggest challenge right now on the production side. On the uh, on the sales side, it's the the world market is becoming an incredibly um, busy, busy and uh, you know and intense market. You know, wine the the growth of wine in regions all over the planet has been shocking. I mean, look at South America, Australia, um, California, Oregon, Washington, um, but throughout the world. You have, you know, even Canada. You can just go on and on. Now China. I mean, the the it's such a crowded market now, and and to be able to to find a place on a on a wine list or on a or on a 
retail shelf is becoming increasingly difficult. We've seen uh, uh, the winemaking industry explode here in the Willamette Valley. Good place for wine? Pinot Noir loves this place. It absolutely loves this place. It wants to be great here. It's like, you know, certain places on this planet, you have plants that want to thrive. It may, it may be tomatoes in certain parts of Italy where they just, they're unbelievable. They want to be great. You have kiwis in New Zealand. They want to be great there. They love that place. They thrive. Pinot Noir thrives in the Willamette Valley. It wants to be great here. And for us, it's been a matter of simply learning how to farm and to ensure that the greatness is realized. You were mentioning, so we're talking about Wally, the pruning robot here, and Wally can take a picture of each vine and remember exactly how he pruned it last year to prune it again next year. You're telling me that that's critical, that each vine has its own unique characteristics and it should be pruned a certain way. Every vine has its own story, and it's revealed in the, in the shape of that, of that plant. And uh, you, you, each one needs to be addressed individually. There's, there's no one way to, to prune an entire vineyard. Um, each one needs to be um, addressed individually, um, pruned, pruned for the issues that it has, in order to get the best performance out of that vine. So also when you're looking at harvesting this crop, you're looking for laborers, not just anybody, could, you just don't want to send anybody in your field and have no, them no. prune or harvest. They have to know what they're doing. Absolutely. It takes a, it takes a lot of experience, frankly, uh, to, to do it well and to understand what each plant absolutely needs. Ken, thank you very much. Pleasure. Dave Adams, AM 1260 KLYC.